Today I'm joined by uh, Lance Godefroy from uh, from Navimaps, who's one of the country's leading experts on all things marine charting. And uh, today we're going to be discussing um, Navionics. Um, so we're going to go through some of the processes of how to choose a chart, how to um, uh, install a chart, uh, update a chart, and the differences between the charts, some compatibility. Uh, we're going to cover compatibility as well. Um, but um, I'm just going to hand you over to uh, to Lance, um, who's going to talk uh, very briefly about uh, Navimaps. Yeah, hi, hi Lee. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, so my name is uh, Lance Godefroy from Navimaps Limited. We're the UK distributor for Navionics, which we've something we've been doing for many, many years. You, my face may be familiar to you from the many boat shows we've done, and uh, it's great to hopefully see that we're going to be doing that again this year. Um, so yeah, he, come along here. Lee's going to fire some questions at me. Uh, he, he's in the hot seat at Force Four and getting lots of questions from customers about charts. So I'm really too happy to uh, to answer you. So at Navi Mats, we're distributing Navionics, as I say, and we're also distributing Garmin Blue charts uh, here in the UK and Ireland. Okay, thanks, Lance. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we uh, get into the mix of things. Um, if you're watching this live, you can uh, add comments and we'll try and get round to your comments and questions if we can. Um, if if we don't get round to them, we'll certainly answer them uh, after the, the live session. And likewise, if you're watching on replay, um, we will yeah, feel free to uh, leave questions and we'll get back to you. Um, okay, Lance, um, let's start with really how to choose a chart. There's there's two platforms. There's Navionics Plus and Platinum Plus. Um, if we can just go through the differences between those two platforms, and that gives a, us an idea of, of what the customer might be looking for between those two platforms. And then we can go into compatibility and formats uh, perhaps after. So, sure. so what are the main differences between uh, platinum, uh, sorry, uh, plus and platinum plus. Okay, so Lee, we've got two two uh, types of chart: Navionics Plus and Platinum Plus. They both contain uh, the foundation of Navionics, which are our nautical charts. Um, uh, this is the huge database that we built up from the, the, the beginning of the company uh, uh, many years ago now. Um, and they also contain our sonar chart layer, which are the high definition contours we introduced uh, uh, about five or, five or six years ago now, which is a revolutionary change to um, the way in which charts could be viewed. They're giving half meter contours um, and they also have community edits. Now, what I'll do, perhaps it may be easier if I share a screen with you, because we've got a new uh, document that we're gonna be uh, sending out uh, quite soon and you can see on here this very nicely gives the the split between what you get with Navionics Plus and what you get with Platinum Plus. So as I mentioned, now, uh, nautical chart, uh, community edits, sonar chart, you get all of those functions. When you've activated a new chart and that you're in subscription, you also get uh, dock to dock auto routing, which is a, a way uh, in which the chart uh, uh, we'll take you, we'll create a route for you automatically. We'll probably touch on that a little bit later. Um, and Sonar Chart Live and Advanced Map Options. Now, so you get that with both Navionics Plus and Platinum Plus. Now, in addition with Platinum Plus, you get Satellite Overlay, which is a top-down view of um, inland and coastal areas. Uh, you get a 3D view, depending on the chart plotter. Um, and you also get panoramic port photos, which is very helpful uh, in it, enhancing your situation awareness when you're entering port. Um, you also get sonar chart shading, which is a, a new layer that we, a new overlay that we introduced uh, about uh, 18 months ago, which is another way of discriminating uh, the, the depths and the contours by showing them in varying shades of blue. It was a very, um, convenient and simple way for you to quickly see where the deeper water is, um, perhaps if you're fishing, where fish holding structures and so on may be. And then finally, the, the new layer that we've added just uh, at the beginning of this year <coughs> uh, called Relief Shading, 
Um, and I'm sure we're going to touch on that a bit more in a moment, but there's a, that's the whole new layer that's getting a lot of attention, uh, particularly from the fishing community. Um, but uh, it's a pretty amazing way of seeing the seabed. So that's it. That's the how to discriminate, how to see the differences between the two chart layers. Okay, okay thanks for that, Lance. Um, so let's just talk about what everyone's talking about at the moment, and that's relief shading. Um, okay. When I first saw relief shading, I, I was struck by uh, and, and really believe that it's a game changer because it really does show the seabed in all its glory. Um, can you just talk us through relief shading, uh, what platforms it's on and, and maybe how you actually get hold of a relief shading? Okay, okay. So as I mentioned, relief shading is coming on uh, Platinum Plus cards. Whoops, sorry. Technical hitch right there. Just let me open something. And I'm going to bring this one across to here. As always, inevitably, a technical hitch. Um, so this, this just briefly describes how you would get how uh, relief shading onto a platinum card because the platinum cards are delivered preloaded with everything uh, but as far as the overlay part is concerned it has sonar chart shading that was the varying shades of blue that i mentioned earlier hmm. in order to to have relief shading on your platinum card you need to download the area that you require so i've just briefly um this shows you how to do that you go to the navionics website uh, find the tab that says my card uh, you do need to have what we call the navionics chart installer installed on your pc we'll probably cover that uh, a little bit later lee i'm sure you've got a question or two about that one yeah. um so the screen i'm sharing with you now is how when you have the chart installer installed on your pc you plug your new platinum card into the into the pc open up chart installer and this is what it sees, it, it, it shows. It's saying that I've inserted that, that particular platinum card covering the English channel. It's asking me if I want to update it. Um, and it's also asking me if I want to download uh, any overlays. So here you can see, if I select an overlay um, using the blue pin, select an area where I want the overlay to be seen, um, it will actually overwrite the sonar chart shading in, uh, and it will pr it will give you the relief shading. So I've put the pins over that section of the channel. Um, here's the warning coming up telling me there's already an overlay present. It's going to replace it. Um, and here's the download in action. It's updating my three nautical sonar and community edits, and it's downloading relief shading. And it's you can see a timer on here. Obviously, it's dependent upon your internet connection um, and. Uh, when that's completed, here you are, you get a tick saying, right, all completed, ready to go. So that's uh, how you get relief shading onto your platinum card. Now, um, so what is relief shading looking mm -hmm. like? Uh, let me, if you bear with me a second again, I'm going to call up. Okay. Right. Okay. So here's some relief shading images on the Navionics filtering app. Now, in order for you to understand relief shading, I would refer you to the Q&A's section of relief shading on the Navionics support pages at navionics.com. And in here we explain, we suggest you check out the relief shading coverage in your area by using the Navionics boating app. Now, if you don't already have the boating app, you can actually take a free trial on it. Um, you get a free a two week free trial. If you like it, you you buy it, you then buy it. But during that free trial, you can check out the relief shading coverage in your area, um, because relief shading there there are two levels of it. There's high resolution and low resolution. Now, in the UK, we are particularly blessed with a large amount of high resolution relief shading. Um, but because of this source data and it's uh, it's very sophisticated data taking up a lot of memory. Um, uh, there, the, 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 it's not everywhere, so that it's blended. Relief shading is coming from either LIDAR, which is an aerial view of the 
uh, of the coastline, uh, sorry, an aerial scan of the coastline or from, or from multi-beam survey data. Now, um, here, so I'm using the Avionics app, and these are screenshots from my iPhone. I just went around the country. It's all around the country. I went from the south coast to the east, up into Scotland, the northeast, um, uh, and then down the other side going into Northern Ireland, uh, Ireland, uh, Welsh coast and so on. So you can see here the sort of uh, data that, that we're, we're getting. Um, you see the, the discrimination. This is uh, up in Scotland. This is very deep water channel. Um, if I zoom in a bit further, I would, I would get uh, more interpretation of how the, the channels and, uh, are going there. If I come back to this one, this is shallower area this is uh, on the south coast somewhere um, uh, and you can see that uh, it's quite shallow but you can you get a feeling for where the the ridges and rock formations are i'll come down to this one uh, similarly um, you, you may be able to pick out that this is in Hamwick station i think is in oh uh, yeah this is off the welsh coast worms head there <laughs> it's very interesting to see how it, how it shallows up right here, but um, particularly if you're fishing, this area here is going to be of interest to you. Um, and then finally, I, I, the next slide is showing it how we can zoom in on a, uh, these are actually wrecks. Um, and this is the amazing thing that uh, fishermen are finding, that um, you're actually seeing the orientation of the wreck as you zoom in. Uh, if you zoom in too far, you'll lose it. But if you zoom into this level, which is pretty decent as you can see it's not only showing the the wreck and you see on the right hand on both of these you're seeing the wreck symbols on the nautical chart but lo and behold the relief shading is actually showing the uh showing the wrecks themselves but it's showing the orientation of them so usually fishermen would typically go up and edit out and use their fish finder to mark how that wreck is wreck is lying put some marks in there to try to sort of do their mini survey of it whilst they're out there. It may take them half an hour or so, maybe longer. Um, but here you can see this is immediately giving them uh, how the orientation. So as soon as they arrive on site on, uh, on the wreck, they can immediately start fishing. So that's quite something. So that's me done an evaluation of it on the Navionics boating app. So okay. now I've got my platinum card and I want to take a look at it on, the pl on my chart plotter. So on my chart plotter, um, these, these are tutorials we've got on the website, uh, how to view it on the uh, solar chart shading, relief shading, and these examples are showing on how to view it on Lorance, Hummingbird, and uh, Raymarine units. Uh, here, uh, just go straight in with it, there's some examples uh, of relief shading. This one is on a Lorance uh, carbon, I believe. These are Hummingbird Solix, and this is a Raymarine Axiom. So you can see how those images uh, are, are, are comparing. This top one here is uh, showing relief shading on the left and sonar chart shading on the right. So, so Lance, um, yeah. it, it's obvious that it's, it's a really good uh, for divers and fishermen, but also uh, for, for those, you know, uh, sailing that, you know, they can see what the what the seabed is like you know for for example if they're coming into an anchorage they were they weren't too sure of they they haven't they'd know that what's underneath them to to anchor in really yeah um exactly that i can see it's useful to all everybody that's out on the water quite honestly obviously from an interest point of view but for practical terms as well as you mentioned the that's a is a great thing for them to be able to do um, and also things like uh, I've got a screenshot in a, in a moment of uh, Portland and you'll see what Portland's looking like and we know why, you know, how uh, careful you have to be in that area and you'll see why in a moment. So I'll just quickly scan sure. for a few more images. Shall yeah, I do that? Brilliant. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is setting up the, uh, so the relief shading on the plotter. Um, you have to go to the aerial overlay and select land and sea and then the relief shading comes up. Here it's at a 100% opacity, which means I don't see any nautical chart underneath it. If I bring it down to about 70%, I start to see the, uh, the, the, the nautical chart underneath it. This is a, on a hummingbird. I'll scroll down a bit more. And here we are on a, um, uh, this is on a, uh, 
on the, the rants actually so you can see here before and after quite interesting to pick up your point lee yeah um, this is the chart this is the nautical chart this is the same area with the sonar chart shade uh, sorry the relief shading so it immediately stands out and this one right here this is the this is off portland bill yes so we can see the overfalls here and uh, why you've got to go a few miles south uh, depending on the state of the tide when you negotiate this area on a cruising yacht or a powerboat or whatever and here this is the shambles which is uh, really gives a great uh, idea for what that's looking like for fishing or for other purposes here's just a few more shots I'll, I'll go through for you very quickly just so that you can get a, an idea of how it looks this is done on various types of uh, units there's Axiom there, uh, Raymarine, there's a, a Helix here as well. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty impressive. Yes, yeah. Just the last slide, I'll just share this with you, just briefly mentioning that this is Garmin release shading on, Gar uh, on Garmin's own blue charts. I've just included that for people yeah. to understand. If, although Navionics is a Garmin company, um, this is... Uh, Garmin have their own release shading on their own blue charts. We're not covering that today, but I'll just sort of throw that yes. in uh, at the same time so you can see that. And this is exactly the same release shading that you're getting in with Navionics. Fantastic. Okay. So, right. so um, jumping around a little bit, so we we know that um, release shading is on Platinum Plus. Can we just jump to compatibility because you basically you know you bought yourself you're probably buying a chart plotter and chart and, yeah. and you want to know if they're compatible yeah. um because i guess um not all chart plotters are compatible with uh, platinum plus so if someone wants to get the release shading so they should really look yeah. at the compatibility table i guess first yeah. to find out if their plotter they've got in mind um Great, excellent. So we've got exactly. The so I'll just come straight up and I'm showing you our compatibility table. It's on the Force Four website and, and the Navionics website. Um, uh, this is what you should do and check out your plotter brand and model to see which of the uh, Navionics charts it's compatible with. So you can see. I'll just go to the top of the list. Uh, we'll go here, just in alphabetical order. B and G. If I've got a B and G uh, Zeus. Um, it will take the SD, micro SD cards. Um, it's compatible with Navionics Plus and Platinum Plus. It does all of the chart layers, nautical sonar community edits, does all the advanced features. Um, and if I just move it along here, you can see it also does the overlays. Um, so that, that particular model, if you've got one of those, you can take full advantage of everything that Navios has, Navionics has to offer. Other units, if you scroll down, you may see one or two others that don't have the platinum coverage, for example. So you won't you won't be able to take advantage of those. Um, so yeah, um, fantastic. Yeah. So so um, so we've just we've looked at some of the, the differences between uh, plus and platinum plus. There's just a few um, a few more features I'd like you to sort of um, expand. Yeah. Um, community edits. Can you explain what community edits are and what benefit is to the uh, to the user? OK, sure. So um, I will share my screen again. I'm sorry to keep doing this, but it's a very Good. convenient way for you to be able to see it. So community edits, what are they? Community edits are coming literally, as it says, from the voting community who uh, since we introduced this uh, uh, this uh, possibility uh, um, it, it, the number of community edits we've, we've got have grown enormously. So the great thing about it is that it's possible for boaters to add something that they've seen and immediately put it on the boat, the Navionics boating app. Um, if you go to the boating app, you've got this area here. Uh, sorry, I'll come down. Here we go. This is the one I'm looking for. Um, you, 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 let's say you, you. Well, I'll give you an example, actually. A couple of years ago, there was a, a, a yacht sunk in around the island right just uh, off south of the, the Needles. Um, this this yacht uh, be, uh, clearly would take some time for that to actually appear on a chart to warn people that it's there. Um, in, in the old days, before we had our daily updates and so on, it could well take 
one for us to get the official data could take a long time and for us to be able to put it on the chart would you know take a little bit of time afterwards after that now with the community edits the community could just select using their navionics boating app okay i've seen the uh, pick up whichever one of these is the most suitable and basically create the details of the wreck um, and add it to the chart at that point and here you are this is where you you find the relevant information and you just literally add it um, at that point um, of adding it, everybody else that's got the community layer switched on in their device will get that edit, um, which is fantastic. And then if you update your Navionics chart through the Sonar, through the chart installer, and you've elected to download the community edits, um, you will see that the uh, community edits appear on the chart card and are... Um, are then visible on your chart in your chart plotter. So the case of the uh, rack I mentioned just now, that was available for everybody to see within, within I think, of just a few hours, quite frankly. And eventually we got the final report coming through to us and we were to, uh, the official report, we were able to add it to the exact location. Thank you, thanks. Um, the next one is Dr. Doc auto routing. Um, auto routing is, uh, is a great feature um, can you just explain a bit about Dr. Doc auto routing? Okay, so Dr. Doc auto routing is a great way for people to be able to create a route on their chart plotter or on the Navionics boating app and share it with their chart plotter um, in, in, a, in a very quick and convenient way. What it does, what I've done here, by the way, I've just gone to uh, the chart viewer section of the Navionics website where I can check out our worldwide database. I can view. I'm considering buying a chart and I want to check out what it looks like in my local area. You can see you have all of the details here. I mean, this is a this is a Thames estuary, and as you can see, it's littered with wind farms. Um, you know, navigation warnings, navigation aids, um, all sorts of boating activities going on here. It's pretty incredible. You can query the information about any of these objects on here, but specifically to ask you about. Uh, wind farms, um, sorry, about uh, Dr. Dark auto routing. What I can do if I, so again, if you've got a Navionics account, you've logged into the chart installer, so you've therefore logged into the chart viewer, um, I can create a route on here, uh, automatic, and what I'll do, hopefully this is going to work. We've got quite a few things going on at the moment with this, uh, with the web, with the uh, session, so just in case, but I'm going to put in a start point here, just one click of the mouse. I'm going to put in an end point over here. Oh, close that uh, right there. Um, I'm sorry, let me just go back. I just probably clicked. Here we go. I'll come back here and I'll go there, click a part there, and I'm going to click another one. Sod's law. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that works. Usually, it works on first click. So we can see here across here is the is the Doctor Doc auto routing being created, um, and there it is. So what I can now do, and what I of course always must do, follow uh, our way uh, uh, training and guidelines to actually check every route that, wh however I create the route, you've got to check everything. So you now can zoom in on the. Uh, chart viewer, check everything. There's a shallow water warning come here. Mm -hmm. Let's just check to see if it's taking us through the channels. I've gone to my boat settings down here, by the way, and created a draft, I think, of two meters. Um, you just click that link and it comes up with the settings that you can change to suit you. Taking me through the channel. Uh, it's bringing me out and it's saying, OK, you can get through this gap here. It is warning of uh, shallow water. Obviously, I need to take account of the tide and see if it's good for me to be able to cross at that time. And here is it's taken me right into this location. It's saying shallow water right at the end as well. Now, what I can do, I can actually save that route. Um, it's named route. I'm going to call it route. Uh, uh, OK, we'll call it uh, uh, F427. Um, uh, so just call it that. Uh, check in route name. OK. I don't know. Error. So, OK, I'm going to keep it as route 80, 82 and I'm going to save it. 
So that route is now saved. It should be saved in my uh, my Navionics cloud effectively. And if I can, I want to show you, go into the routes on my device. And here we are. Okay, that, okay, route, uh, stop, okay. Here we are. It's come straight across onto my, I don't know if you can see me there, Lee. Yes, I can. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. You can see it saved automatically onto my uh, Navionics uh, boating app. And the great thing about that is that it means that I can um, uh, actually run something called Plotter Sync, which will right. enable me to uh, transfer that across to my chart plotter. And would that be transferred via Wi-Fi or Blue? Or yeah. it, uh, okay. So we've got something called. Uh, let me just find you here again. Sorry. Here we are. There we are. Okay, we've got a, a something called uh, Plotter Sync, which is a way in which you can connect your uh, mobile device, the Navionics boating app, uh, to the chart plotter. So here I am. I've, I've created a route at home on the chart viewer. I've saved it in my boating app, and I've sent it straight. At, uh, and then I, when I get to the boat, I'm going to connect the Wi-Fi uh, to my, uh, of the mobile to the chart plotter, and I'm gonna send the route across to the chart plotter. It goes firstly to the Navionics, boat, the Navionics chart card in the plotter, which must, you know, both must be in subscription. Yeah. Go to the uh, chart plotter, and then you extract it from the, uh, the, chart, the Navionics chart card and save it in the memory of the plotter. This is all detailed, go to the Navionics uh, support pages and you'll see where you can go, have a step-by-step -step guide of how to do that. Fantastic. Um, the next uh, the next feature I'd like to cover is Sonar Chart Live and what that gives the end user and how they actually access Sonar Chart Live and how do they record Sonar Chart Live. Okay, so Sonar Chart Live is a function that you uh, uh, to enable you to, um, as you can see on the screen here, you uh, you can create your own your own maps as you're moving your your own detailed uh, survey uh, of uh, of an area that uh, uh, as you're in motion in real time appearing on your your plotter screen uh, in front of you. So here the, the the example I'm showing you here, you can see the shallow areas are shown in red. Uh, all the dense contours that you're seeing. Uh, the vessel was created in real time, and that's your personal uh, sonar chart live uh, files that are saved on your card um, for you to overlay at any time that, that you would like. Now, again, go back to the compatibility table and see which devices are, are compatible with sonar chart live. Some of them save it to the Navionics boating app, other, others save it to the actual chart plotter. But uh, you can see here, there's lots of uses for that from fishing to uh, checking out uh, a good anchorage point, you know, yeah. what's going on if are areas that haven't been surveyed for a long time, this is a great way in which you can create your own maps uh, in real time. So Lars, it's using the sonar, the, the sonar from the multifunction display uh, to create that, those, those contoured maps. It, yes, it is. Now, a common question we have is if someone has, uh, doesn't have a fish finder imaging sonar and they just have a, an instrument transducer that's giving them depth, will that work? Will that no. actually? No. So it's got no. to be a imaging. It, it, it's got to be something that's capable of, of, of providing the image. No. And if, if it's, um, for example, there's a, a, the Raymarine Dragonfly, for example, will connect the. Uh, and, and create sonar chart live image, but that appears on the Navionics boating app. Right. So okay. that's a, that's another way so, uh, oh. of, of having it. So the various ways, and I do know some people uh, actually uh, have installed these sort of devices in a bait boat on a cart lake. Uh, oh, yeah. Send the bait boat out and take a survey of the cart lake, and oh, yeah. the the images appearing on their iPad on the Navionics boating app. So they so they they've done their own survey. Wow. Which, is, which is great, yeah. Brilliant. Um, last of all, there are a couple of things just to touch on. 
Yeah. Um, satellite overlay with sonar sonar chart shading that comes on the platinum plus chart, and then if you go to relief shading, it overwrites uh, that particular feature. What's satellite overlay with sonar chart shading? What what does that give you? So so sonar chart shading. Um, bear with me a second. It's probably I'll just find the you're firing the questions at me here, Lee. So sorry, Lance. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, just going to find the on on our website. Actually, I'm going to come up to share with you again the screen and um, on the web website here we are. Satellite overlay with sonar chart shading. That was your question. Yes. Um, this is a this is showing everything on here that that I've just been talking about the differences between the charts and so on. But if I click on these two, like this, learn more. Um, it's showing. Uh, I'll just let this come up. And it's going to show me um, what sonar chart shading is doing. So this overlay is creating uh, this top image. is quite a good way of, of seeing it, actually. These are the uh, discriminating the contours to show um, varying depths. And this can this is useful because obviously the dark uh, blue is the uh, is represents the deeper channels, and the varying shades of blue over here on the right. Uh, is uh, showing you the kind of structure of what's below the vessel at any time, and we can we can see here that uh, there's the satellite overlay coming, uh, and the next slide is showing the uh, sonar chart shading. So uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so we've touched on the features and the differences between um, Navionics Plus and Platinum Plus, and we've also looked at compatibility. The next. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is actually the, the hardware of the, the card. So there's um, SD, micro SD, and compact flash. Um, yeah. So um, most common question we have is, um, well, the, the complaint we have is, that my, you've sent me a Navionics card, but it's too big to go into the plotter. And there's a little secret, isn't there, to, to these? Um, yeah. Do you know what? I've heard that one on the odd occasion before, Lee. <laughs> uh, I can't, uh, no, the thing is, so every time we, so the, the plot is, this is an SD card. Okay, that, that's the size of an SD card. Um, some plotters will take SD cards. Some plotters take micro SD cards. So regardless of what, uh, uh, you has been ordered if it's in SD forward slash MSD format, we send you one of these. Now people receive one of these and they've got, a, they need a micro SD and they phone up us up and they say, hang on, this car is way too big. It just won't fit. And uh, we've even had a relay of messages going to and from about five or six communications before finally people do realize that the, there's a little slot on the bottom of here and this thing, this micro SD, it's what you want for the your plotter, is plugged into the um, my, the SD card. So that's that's it basically. Um, we do supply, you know, there are card readers that you can plug this into. You may not have a card reader that takes a micro SD, but you may have, you may have a card reader that takes a an MSD. So that's a good thing. Sorry, an SD rather. That's a good thing to make sure you don't lose it because also mm -hmm. on here you can see at the bottom of it it's it's giving me the identification of the chart i don't know if it's in focus or not. i'm sorry if it's not but um at the bottom of there it's also giving its unique serial number the micro sd card is too small to print that on so hold on to this one the white label's got quite a lot of useful information okay and co compact flash is still available Lance? Yeah. Yeah, compact flash is still available. Uh, this is a compact flash card suitable for the uh, Raymarine uh, chart plotters, uh, the, the old Raymarine, the old C-series classic, E-series classic that go back a number of years. Uh, we only supply them in on two gigabyte now, but thankfully we're still able to support those machines. There's still a lot of them out there. People are slowly changing and transitioning into the newer models, but we can still supply chart for those plotters. And am I right in thinking that you, you can't have Platinum Plus on a on a uh, compact flash now absolutely correct yeah navionics plus only yeah navionics plus. okay so we've gone through choosing a chart compatibility differences between plus and platinum plus so customers bought the chart plotter bought a, a, a navionics card what do they need to do 
to before they put the chart in the chart plotter? Do they need to register it in, in any way or what, what do they need to do next? Yeah. Uh, OK, so just bring up the screen again. And on the Navionics website is a tab. So Navionics.com, there's a tab there that says My Card. When they go to My Card, it tells you to activate, update and more. So this is a way in which you can activate the chart for uh, the advanced features and uh, also be able to uh, get uh, daily updates. So as I scroll down here, the key thing, the chart installer is a free computer application that lets you interact with the content of your Navionics plotter anytime you need. So right here, first time here, download it, uh, or, or if you already have it, launch it. Now, if you recall back at the beginning of the session, we talked, I gave you some, uh, when we were showing how to download relief shading onto the platinum card, that was showing you how a card looks when you've downloaded the chart installer, activated your card, and uh, you see the subscription period left for updates, and you can download the overlays and update it as frequently as you want. And I just want to emphasize the importance of the daily updates. Um, sorry, Lee, I don't know if you're going to answer the question. I'll, I'll take the advantage of just mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, globally, Navionics do 5,000 updates every day. We're the only company that actually publishes that those updates and makes them uh, available for our users to download them onto their, uh, their device through this. If you've got the mobile app, you download it straight on. If you've got the chart card, um, this uh, chart installer application is, a, is something you really should have uh, to keep your chart up to date because... Uh, so many things happen and change uh, continually. OK, um, right. So I've got a few questions, common questions now that we get from, um, yeah. from people. First of all, is there any difference in detail between a small area chart and a larger area chart? No, not at all, Lee. Um, uh, on the, uh, just to perhaps go into that just a, a little bit more, um, let me just show uh, on the screen here on 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 your uh, website actually on the force for website um, there's the brand page here and here we've got all the the uh, um, the, the various chart areas wow. some, some of them are small sorry some of them are small some of them are are large the level of content is the same right. so if you've chosen a Navionics plus card with a small area uh, you're getting all of the same content as you get with a large area and vice versa. It's just the area of coverage that is uh, that, that, that differs, basically. Yeah. OK, on to the next question. Um, a lot more people are using chart plotters on inland waterways. And the question I've got is that the inland waterway chart, which is I think it's called 576. Is that data also on the whole of the UK chart, the 28 XG chart? Is the uh, does that chart cover the inland waterway? Yes, it is. Okay, just up on the screen here again. This chart view is such a useful tool. Mm -hmm. uh, I've just zoomed in for it as an example to the Thames. The answer to your question is uh, yes. It yes, it it does. Um, everything, uh, everything that you see uh, on the um, for all the inland coverage which you get on the our small chart that is only inland coverage, or you have the full uh, chart with the code 28 in either Platinum or um, Navionics Plus, that has all of the inland coverage on there as well. Now, I, I want to just show you that we've we've done a, added a huge amount of data uh, to the inland coverage uh, in recent times. Um, this is uh, including the canal network, We've got some examples here where we're showing overhead pylon, um, points of interest like post office, pharmacies, etc. Uh, when you come, when you join the canal network, here's a right. Uh, somebody's going to correct me. I'm sure it's I believe known as a wind is a winding hole, but I may be wrong. And maybe it's a winding hole. But the fact is, this is where this is an area beside Weybridge Marina where the um, the canal boats uh, can turn. Uh, uh, so, yeah, the answer is it's all there. I mean, I would urge users to uh, take a look at this. It's uh, pretty fascinating. If you if you go up to some areas, you know, OK, the famous, of course, in Birmingham, where we've got the a bit, you know, the huge canal network. Here we are. It's, here we are. Um, Old Turn Junction It's telling you whether you 
if you're at this point do you turn left or right uh, here you go to new main line um, and so on um, there's a lot there you can actually also here just as you're looking you can switch on the aerial overlay or just and we go to map options uh, switch on satellite there you go you can actually get a uh, an, a satellite overlay or a terrain overlay so uh, no overlay at all and uh, i'll just quickly because I, I i become a bit of a geek on this i enjoy i really enjoyed quite looking at it we've got a lot of users on the trent for example and on the trent you can go to um uh, you can uh, see that the trend comes right down into the canal work network. I'm also going to switch on the chart viewer or a sonar chart layer. So uh, we, I haven't covered that, but on our sonar chart layer, this is using the, again the user data that is. Uh, this is how we create our sonar chart layer. And you see on these areas, we're getting lots of data, so we're able to get a lot of depth information coming from users, and this it really helps them where the you know, on the bend, the rivers quite often it, it, it goes shallow there for, for silt and so on. So, so that's great. Um, also, just covering as well. Let's just take a look at uh, because all the lakes in the, in Scotland are, are covered. But I'll just quickly show you for saving time. Here's Lake Windermere. Now, for years we were asked about Lake Windermere. Have you got any coverage of Lake Windermere? Well, now we have. But the depth coverage um, is coming uh, an awful lot from users as well. So, um, yeah, that's all. You get all of that on our Navionics uh, 28 chart code. Fantastic. Okay. Um, another common question, Lance. You've probably had this 100 times. Can you put a Navionics chart into a Garmin unit? No, okay. As I've very briefly alluded to uh, just now when I was showing you the relief shading images, Garmin, um, who, are, you know, Navionics is a Garmin brand. Um, as you know, uh, Garmin purchased Navionics about four years ago. Um, but the great thing was they were able to incorporate Navionics into their own chart uh, uh, format. And Garmin have the chart format known as uh, a G3, Blue Chart G3. You can have either Blue Chart G3, which is, shall we say, equivalent to Navionics Plus, or you have Blue Chart G3 Vision, which is the equivalent to Plat. You know, that, that draw line equals sort of Platinum Plus. You know, vary some changes, but. Basically, Garmin uh, chart plotters use their own Garmin format. That here at this session, we've been talking about Navionics format yeah. for other Perfect. brands. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. We've touched on this, but how often do Navionics update their charts? And okay. How often can the customer update his chart at home? Okay. So. Uh, just to go back, uh, typically we get asked at boat shows, how often do you update your chart? You know, people who do uh, their courses and understand the importance of keeping charts up to date can be quite laborious sometimes. If you've got a paper chart, you get the notice of errors. I just actually wonder how many go to their charts and write down all of those little amendments that you're going to do mm -hmm. um, I sus uh, that are being published. I suspect there's a fairly... I suspect the number isn't too high, but um, the good news is that Navionics charts get updated every day. As I say, globally, we do 5,000 updates to charts of all the various points uh, uh, every day. Those charts, those updates are made available to download. So new things coming on at the beginning of the season, or I don't know, let's say some racing marks and so on, that only get published in around March time. If you want to have them on your, on your chart, um, just go to your, through to the chart installer, uh, hit the Navionics um, uh, uh, nautical chart update and hit all three, quite frankly, because you'll get all of the updates. So you can do it every day while the card is in subscription. Fantastic. Okay. Um, another question. Can you say a customer brings his boat back from the Med to the UK and he's got a Med chart in the chart plotter? Can he exchange that chart for, say, a UK chart? What's the process of, of, of doing that? Sure, he can. The, the good thing about that is the existing chart will actually give him a, a, a good value, a good discount off the price of a, another chart. So he doesn't necessarily need to buy the, the, uh, uh, the whole new area again. He can actually exchange his old card for a new one, or he can buy what we call a Navionics update card, uh, either blank or preloaded with an area of his choice, um, and use his old card to activate it via the chart installer again that chart installer tool you put the update card into it it asks to see the old card it sees it you just plug it in 
put the update card back in again and it's activated and, and ready to start uh, in the new area. Brilliant. Now, um, coming towards the end of the session now, and I've got some quick fire questions for you. So I'm going to give you an example of a, uh, a, a boat. Uh, and can you tell me the best Navionics package for that particular boat? So sure. I'm going to start off with an obvious one, Lance. It's a, a fishing, uh, a fisherman in a fishing boat, say like a, a Narva or a warrior or something like that. Yeah. What uh, chart would you recommend? Okay, so here's what's happened. Since we've introduced relief shading, fishermen love to have relief shading. That's what they're going for. They want, they want, they want everything now, and they are going to platinum. And the platinum is the card for them if they want to get the maximum benefit. Okay, and I guess we could say the same for a, a diving rib. Diving again, yeah. I mean, the sonar charts were were great when they started to see those and the community edits and so on. But those guys, uh, you know, you, you 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 frequently they dive on wrecks. Uh, relief shading is just going to make uh, make quite a difference for them. Okay, um, how about uh, a small speedboat or a small uh, sort of cuddy boat with uh, an entry level chart plotter? Okay, you're probably quite happy with a Navionics Plus card. Um, depending on what your type of boating is, you just want to poodle around. You want to be sure that you've got the depth underneath the boat, you've got the different navigation marks that you're seeing, you want to understand what they are. You can query all the objects on the chart just by hitting the question mark. Um, but yeah, Navionics Plus. Again, uh, if you travel around the country a bit, you may want to have one that covers all of the UK, sometimes go on the river, sometimes on a lake, sometimes in the sea. The UK card does it all for you. If you're just doing something locally in your own neck of the woods, well, when I say neck of the woods, you can say from there's a, a you know quite large small cards areas of coverage. Um, that's probably more than you, as, as, as much as you need. Okay, and um, how about... Uh, uh someone with just a, a cruising yacht say a 30 foot cruising yacht um maybe going across to france what, what sort of, sort well, of you, you know it's up it's up to the to those owners to make their own decision because i, I mean we've uh, alluded to the benefits of platinum and what release shading can give some further imagery to help their awareness of what's uh, below uh, below them um if they if they go to a platinum card then they'll get all of those benefits uh they the nautical charts are the same on both Navionics Plus and Platinum Plus, so it really is up for them to decide. They, sure. may, want to trade, they may want to do a trade up to Platinum, for example. Okay, and um, often we're uh, sort of a rising sport in the UK is kayak fishing. Yeah. Um, and kayak fishermen seem to be putting bigger and bigger units on their boats. So, so yeah. what would you recommend for a kayak fisherman? Well, well for those guys, and uh, you know, I've quite a lot of few years' experience working or good relationships with many kayak fishermen and i i can tell you those those guys really have those kayaks fitted out with uh, so much kit um and more and more sophisticated kit if you're really seriously into it you want to plotter on that kayak that is going to give you uh, relief shading yeah if, if you if you're if you're watching the budget and you don't want to spend too much then go for navionics plus okay okay i think we're coming to the end of the session um is there anything that We've missed, Lance, anything you can think of that uh, we haven't covered? I, I don't think so. Um, as I say, uh, uh, use the use the support page, the support tab on the Navionics website. There's a huge knowledge base in there. You know, I mentioned Plotter Sync, so you just type the word Plotter Sync in the search bar and up comes the article. Depending on which your plotter is and what it is you're trying to do, you can choose your article. Um, there's a wealth of information on the website. Uh, you share, you've got the Navionics compatibility table also on the Force 4 website. You've got a brand page on there. So uh, take a look at everything that's on there as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to wrap things up. And thank you very much, Lance, for joining us. It's been, uh, it's been really good to discuss some of these aspects. And um, thanks to all of you for watching, if you're watching live or watching on the replay. And also uh, thanks to our producer in the background, Elise, who's been working away, making sure it's all working. And... Um, I guess we'll see you guys next time.